Hey guys, Jason Snow with a tutorial guide for a new website that just came out recently called MTG Stand. So I saw this on the Magic Finance Reddit, and they said that you could scan your cards through your desktop, which is interesting because everything is usually an app you need on your phone. So this one you can use your webcam instead. So let's go try it out and see if it's any good. So what it has, it has a seller's market. I don't know much about that, but I'll go over it in a bit. It has pricing, which it gets from a API from Scryfall. If you ever heard of Scryfall, it's like a card library for Magic Gathering. And then you can also import your collection and a whole bunch of other stuff. There's a lot of features, so let's go over the basics. So to scan your cards, you don't need an account. I do have an account though, because I want to throw, up your, throw it in a collection. Click card scanner, and then you need to scan your cards. So I'm going to be doing this like the bootleg way. So my camera quality does look bad right here, but it does pick up the cards. So what we're going to be doing is it has instructions at the top, so if you go to settings and instructions, so if you look like let's go to settings and instructions, you can add cards to your collection, etc. It has the language of the cards, you, uh, you can do the condition, mint basically doesn't exist, but you know, mint is mint, it's the near mint. Uh, you can do foils if you want, etc. And then it has your camera options, and then it tells you what to do. So, the camera is a little bit annoying, so what you need to do in order to get the perfect shot is A, invest in some kind of stand, so you're not holding it like me, because this is a pain in the butt. But well, basically what you do is you need a white paper like this, and you need to make sure it's covering the whole entire case. And then secondly, you want to make sure you have the card. So we're going to test four different types of cards. So first is a normal card. So we have a weapon rack. So it does look blurry here, but it should pick up. So we have a white background. You don't want any glare, and you don't want any shadows. My room has bad lighting, and it's nighttime. I literally have the lamp right next to me because it's that bad, but it should pick up. And there it was. So when the card picks up, You'll have it right here, and I'll tell you the set, current value, etc., and it will add it to collection, which we'll go into in a bit. Also, this was recorded. This part was recorded after I did the collection tutorial, so if you guys are a little confused once I go to the next part. So now we're going to try a common and a sleeve, a penny sleeve. So penny sleeves are very common, of course. Send. So we're going to click it, see if it scans. Should do it, because I know I had it done before. And there you go. It, it worked. Another thing you need to do is, you can't do it sideways, you can't stack cards on top of each other like this and try to scan them because it won't work. And it's really, really tough to try to get the perfect picture spot. I mean, the best way is either to hold the camera, which to be honest is kind of annoying, or to have some kind of tripod set up. So it does scan through penny sleeves. Now foil. Now foils have glare. And it's foil crap results, but... And in a penny sleeve, it does pick up, but this requires such preciseness, it's not even funny. So let's see if we can get it on the first try. I'm gonna click, please get it. Oh, hey, we got it, we got it. Alright, we got the room crap. This took me like 20 minutes to figure out, so let's, let's do the card sideways a little bit and see if it still picks it up. Uh, the loading is kind of a bit slow on this thing. Hey, it still picked it up. Okay, so maybe it doesn't have to be exact, but. Uh, what do you call it? Sometimes the foiling throws it off and it will take multiple scans, which is annoying. Also, if you don't have to set the foil, you'll have to do it manually. So, but it does work, so that's good. And then lastly, we have a glossy, like, Ultra Pro sleeve. So, we're gonna try the glossy Ultra Pro sleeve. So it does pick up in regular sleeves too, but we wanna see if it picks up in this. So, I think this was the first line of Ultra Pros where they changed the texture of the art sleeves. Oh, it picked up. Alright, so it picked up anyway, so. That's how you scan your card. So tips once again, basically, is you can do it in sleeves. Make sure you have a white background. Usually just a piece of, uh, what do you call it, computer printed paper is good. Uh, and just make sure the card is in the box. Alright, so that's all you need for scanning stuff. So if you already finished all the scanning, etc., and you want to make an account because you want to import a collection or even a buy list, this is just awesome. It does buy a list. Uh, what do you call it? You just go to your account page. Click and go to Collection Manager. That's if you set it up to go to the collection. So you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff. So you can either quick add. So for example, I want to add Blue Eyes. Like, no, I just want to add a. I can't even think of a magic card. Uh, let's just type in the car. It should come up. Uh, Fertile Thicket. Then send the car by. Alright, so we'll just add that. Click. And Fertile Thicket should show up in the bottom of here. That was from Over the Gates Watch. No, it was from Battle for Azwa. Oh, Battle for Azwa. <laughs> Battle for Zendikar. I'm doing this video mad late. I'm so tired. But anyway, it shows up here. So here's, you see Fertile Thicket, values, etc. So, let's mess around. So you have mass selection options. I'm not going to go through this, but basically if you click this, do whatever option you want, and then you do like this or whatever, it'll sort everything the way you want it. 
and then it will show you the value. So right now we have nine dollars in our card apparently, and you can also export a CSV file, which I'll go into in a bit. That's mostly for a uh, buy list, or if you want to send people like on Facebook or stuff, things like that. And then it has filters. So for example, I just want to see uh, Zen the Car Rising cards. I'll click the Zen the Car Rising symbol, and now it's going to filter for that. Only issue with this, unless I'm not seeing it anywhere, is there's no way to unclick this. I mean, if the site just came out, so obviously there's some things that need to be worked out, but if you just hit refresh, it should reset it. Alright, there's the reset. You also do Rarity Language Condition, you can set foil or non-foil, etc. So, now to remove cards, or add cards, etc. Go down to the page. So, for example, I don't have any of these... Over the gate watch cards. Any, let's delete anything that's not, uh, what do you call it? Over the gate watch, whatever. We'll delete these four. So, what you want to do is if you click all, you can either do mass selection or you can just hit the delete button. So, when I hit the delete button, so that's just delete one. If we want to, let's uncheck these because this is mostly for mass selection. We're going to uncheck those. So, let's say I have two fertile thickets. So, what you can do, you'll see a gear sign right here. Click it, backspace two. Click off, it will update. Now, it won't update, like, the price if you do multiple, so I'm going to refresh to double check that. So yeah, it's not going to update the price for multiples, it's just going one by one. So, just don't be worried about that. Uh, we're going to hit one, change it back to one. And then you can also change the, uh, what do you call it, the value, or the price, I should say. So the value, it gets its values from Scryfall, I said, which I think Scryfall uses DCG Player, kind of. So I don't trust the values too much, so if you're not sure about a card, I would definitely double check on TCG Player or whatever your preferred website is. They do have Euros in here, so if you're worried about you not being in the US, etc., you could change your languages, etc. So this price is the price they use, dynamic price. So this is updated, I think, every 48 hours, which is kind of a bit slow, but it's basically the price to get. It's basically more of a reference. Don't take it as gospel. So what you can do here is you can also lock in the price. So for example, I'm going to lock in the fixed price and it's going to update from here and show you like the stock market if it gains or loses and it'll give you the plus whatever. Or you can unlock it again and you'll just have the set amount of five and it will change every couple of days, etc. And you can also change the amount. So for example, I value this card. I want to sell it for $10 because I am crazy. I'm going to put 10. I'm going to click off. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Alright, so we're learning as we go. So there is a maximum price of 4,900% of value, which is strange, but you can change the price, lock it in, and then you can do your maths there. So we're going to unlock it. Actually, we're going to delete this. So we're going to delete this one. So we're done with that. Delete. Alright, so we have three rune crabs here, right? So one of them was foil. So first we're going to change number to one. Click off. Go over to, you can also change conditions. So for example, these are not mint, they're near mint. You can change condition. Uh, you can change foiling. So you just toggle foil. Foil will not update the price until you refresh it. So we're going to hit refresh. And there you go, went from 64 cents to 134. You can add a note. Brad Dance is the best. But we're going to delete this because it does interfere with some buy list things. So I'm just going to leave that there. And then you can also drag and drop images from your uh, webcam, files, that homework folder. But anyway, you can do that. And then that's pretty much all there is to the collection tracker. And then you can sort it, etc., etc., how you want it. So let's go make a buy list thing. So this is probably the most important part. Because I think this is mostly going to be used for people for buy lists. Because this might be the first of its kind app where it scans the buy list. Or at least it makes finding the buy list really easy. So we're going to go to Buy List Manager, click buy list, buy list Manager. So to add these cards, you need to have changed the settings in the cards. So I already did some here. It's pretty much exactly the same as the Buy List. And this is basically the cards you want to buy. So, I mean, of course. So this is, I think, for the store that they have here. And to be honest, I don't, it's more of a reference-based kind of thing. You can also put your eBay links and stuff. I'll go into that in a bit. But this is like stuff you want to buy. So I have like two, uh, Elder Garros, one Rune Crab I want to buy. It shows like the value I'm willing to pay. Going by the dynamic price, or I can change the value if I want to. 
But we're going to delete these just in case because I'm going to try to do something else. I'm going to delete these. So what we're going to do is go here and we're going to go to my buy list. And we're going to go here. So here's my buy list. And this is where you can put in the cards you want to sell, etc. Or at least put in the buy list, I should say. So we have that. This is basically the same as the other one. So here it is, buy list, buy list, etc., etc. And then there's also bulk add. And this one I think is probably actually the quickest one technically. So if you know the condition of most of your cards, etc., you could you're probably better off doing bulk add because it's a lot quicker, except for the loading screen. It's another little gripe I have about this. The loading screen is really slow. So what you do here is you choose a set. So when it's in the card rising since those are all the new cards. You can filter by name, so you gotta keep this in here though, where it says set whatever. And we're gonna take crab, hit enter, and there you go, the crab show up. So we're gonna go back, hit enter. So it shows you like the value of the set, I wouldn't pay attention to the values at the moment. And then you have other values that you can range, so you can see what's what, you can change the cards per page, etc. So in order to use this, you just gotta click on the card. Alright, so yeah, you gotta select card language, so we're gonna do US condition, near mint, quantity 1, non -4. So at least the website tells you that's enough. So that should work. You should get a green. There you go. We got a green. So I'm going to add just a couple uh, random cards in here. All right. So now I'm port a buy list. So I don't know if this is supposed to be like on purpose, but basically the buy list that you see here, buy list manager, does not have a download CSV option. So what I'm going to assume is that this is a buy list for buying cards on the site because it does have a deals page and stuff like that. So I'm going to delete this for now because I'm not sure how that works on this website. So I'm going to delete that because that might be telling people like, oh, I want to buy this from you or something like that. So now we're going to go to collection. So what you're going to want to do is go to collection manager, export and download. So you're going to download a CSV file. Uh, we're going to type in card kingdom. All right. So for buy list, go to a site like card kingdom, not sponsor or anything like that. Go to CSV import. The first option doesn't seem to work for me for some really odd reason. So we need to import pasted CSV data from the actual thing itself. So we're going to go to this one. So this is a, what do you call it? This is the spreadsheet. We're going to go to name. And we're going to copy everything except the note because the note part seems kind of mess it up sometimes. And we're going to hit paste. So you're going to get this weird string of data. Don't worry about it. Hit import. If you do what I did, you should have this same screen where it'll say there's an issue, but you just got to change some things. So what you need to do is hit set column, title, that's the title card, set column, quantity, set column, edition, and then click no foils. If you have no foils, we do have one foil. So we're going to click foil. I think that's why I messed up last time. If you don't have any foils, click the no foil button. If there's only one of each, set all quantity to one and click parse. So once parse, everything will be added in. And it will show you what they're buying and what they're not buying. So right here, they process all the titles. They're buying four cards, and they're currently not buying four other cards. So we have Rune Crab. They're buying for 15 cents, which is very bad. Uh, Zan Ref said Trickster. I technically didn't put that in. I guess it saved my old one for some reason. They're buying for 80 cents. And then here are the cards that they won't buy. So for some reason, they're not buying foil Rune Crabs. It's kind of interesting because I thought people would want some crab, crab bullying. They're not buying weapon rack, which is common, and they're not buying slip loose brace, which is common. So once you're good, you can either add all, or you can click this. So I'm going to click add all. And then you got to click transfer cards, the card from the cart. Uh, man, what is this? There you go. Alright, so what you do need to do though, so for example, I don't own this card right here uh, in normal version. So what you're going to need to do is manually look for it. All right, yeah, I was on the wrong page. So you make sure you click sell cards, and so you get the seller buy list. Go to magic singles and foils, and then look for the version they're taking if you have it. And then make sure it's the right version because this, you know, we're basically hitting Yu-Gi-Oh levels of cards. We have promo pack, we have extended art, previous one, you know, basically the whole song and dance. Uh, make sure you pick the correct one. So they're only buying, which is really strange, uh, the extended art for forty cents, but they're buying the regular one for fifty cents, which also just went down in price since I last did this video. So we're going to add this to cart instead, and I'll show you how many they're buying. They buy up to like 200 to 500 pieces of some cards, it's crazy. Click one, or how many you have, then go back to view, oops, wrong one, sorry. Go back to view sell cart, and then 
remove anything you don't have. So I don't have this one. Click fresh. And there you go. So that's how you change your editions. Because it's not going to give you like the exact editions. And if you look here, some places pay out store credit at like 30%, etc. So depending on your website, this will be different. But this is how you do it for Card Kingdoms. Listed. All right, so now we have the settings. So if you go to settings, the most important one is the MCG market stand. If this is basically if you're looking to sell cards, for the most part. So it'll put your name, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Most of it won't be displayed on your profile. It's just I guess you gotta put there if it's requested. And then city, and then most importantly, change your currency to your correct current currency. There you have almost everything pretty much. And then here's the best part: minimum order amount. So they don't let you put a custom amount. But I assume it's taking uh, into account shipping. So these, I think, are pretty fair prices. So if you don't want somebody buying like 75 cents worth of cards and costing you like $2 in shipping, etc., make sure you put your limit amount a lot higher than what you need. So I think 20 is kind of fair because unless you're selling to like a buy list, you don't want to be sending out like 10 cent cards or even 10 might be better. So 1186 basically. And then preferred payment method, you have to put which one you want. Uh, you, if you have a website, that also helps. So anything you can fill out here will help you get more sales, I guess. You also put your phone number. I honestly wouldn't do that. Uh, and then we have an additional, re unless you're a store, but stores technically shouldn't be using this. <laughs> and if you have additional references, you can link to your eBay, your Amazon, or link to your Facebook reference thread. But it's pretty much word of mouth. You can also block users. And you can block countries, so I'm going to put China. I'm not joking, but, <laughs> you know, there are problem countries, of course, so if you don't want to send the problem countries, select the old country. You could almost say that's racist. But anyway, lastly, if you go to the info board and go to Magic Mark Hit Stands, you can select facial filters for where your stands want to come from. And no, this is not a JoJo reference. So... You'll get to see whoever has a stand, etc., and if they have a buy list active. So we're just going to click a profile of somebody who looks like they're active that I haven't seen before. So here you go. This guy named uh, Winter Bellin. So we're going to click this. So this is the profile page that you'll see. The more data they put in, it really depends on what's what. Since the site's brand new, nobody really has any ratings. But you can also check a bunch of stuff. So you can add contact. You'll see the login, last login, when they made their accounts, minimum orders. And most importantly, what they have up for sale. So, for example, I want to buy uh, Abundance from Urza's Saga. He has that. It shows all the stuff. It has the conditions, etc. And then you can search and filter like you could do on any other place. And then you can also view the buy list. Most people don't have a buy list. So, yeah, you're not buying any cards. If you want to sell on cards, you can do that. But you need to note, though, this is all done in DMs for the most part. So... If somebody doesn't have like references and has like a sketchy looking page, it's really up to your discretion to try to figure out if it's a scam or not. So I assume the DMs are done in this app, but as far as like payments and stuff, it, it might be done off site, like on a different, uh, on an email address or something like that. So, but I'm not really looking to buy stuff on this site, so I can't really go into super details of that. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. There are a lot of other features, but you really don't need them. Etc. So, in my opinion, this is probably the best we're going to get for now. Uh, the issues are obviously slow loading and stuff, but if you can get around slow loading and figure out your camera, this is probably the best way to sort your collection through a desktop. You know, you can sit, chill, listen to music, etc. So, I really do like it. If you want to support the guy, if you're impressed with this, he has a whole bunch of socials on the bottom. He has Patreon. I think that's what he's taking right now. It's Patreon because this is all free. You don't you don't have to pay for it. You don't have to pay for any of this, and that's how he's funding it for now. Uh, they're trying to get him to make an app and maybe put some ads in it to see if he can make some money, because I don't know how uh, sustainable this process is, making it totally free, but for the most part, pretty damn good. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Fish Fields is free. Subscribe for more Magic videos and Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. And I'll see you guys next time.